Hello! And welcome to another Theory Crafting video. We got another rework in the Nexus. Not just Tracer was changed, but Cassia was changed as well. Now, I have really enjoyed Cassia in the past. I'm actually amazed I never gold ringed her. I She was one of those picks where it was like, if all of my main picks were banned, I would go to Cassia. Always really liked her. Specifically for, do we still have it? Charge Strikes? I love Charge Strikes. Oh, it's different. I love Charge Strikes in the past. I thought it was really, really fun to go into, especially a melee heavy team with Charge Strikes. This was nerfed in the past. Fun fact, Cassia was the reason this was changed. Uh, Tastar might have been a bit of a culprit too. You used to be able to hit buildings with charge strikes, and the range it would go was based off of the hitbox of whoever you were attacking. So if you were hitting a core, you could hit everyone that was in range of a core. If the core could attack them, you could attack them with charge strikes. Think about that for a second. It's pretty crazy. That was a long time ago, though. And Cassia seems to have gotten a full rework since then. So, this is going to be a long, boring, drawn-out look at the other newest character to be changed inside of the Nexus. If you don't want to hear my thoughts on Cassia, if you don't want to see me read every talent and probably be, be wrong about a lot of things, then you have been warned. Leave now. Or forever hold your peace. So, I first of all want to say that I love the new skins and the new mounts. I think Cassia looks fantastic like this. And the new splash art is very, very good too. I commend everyone who worked on that, by the way. It is super duper good. Awesome job. Awesome job. Um, I don't know anything about Cassia's rework, so we're going to be going uh, through this from the ground up. Charge Spear, does that have a range increase? That seems like a really fun... I'm going to diverge to chat for a lot of answers here, and then I'll convey that to you guys. So we have Lightning Fury! Hurl a Lightning Javelin that deals 156 damage to the first enemy hit and splits into two Lightning Bolts that deal 156 damage to enemies at their path. Um, who was I talking to? Was it Solid Jake? We went to like a press thing when they were releasing Cassia and Genji. They came out with the Heroes 2.0 re reveal. Um, we both thought that it would be cool if you could press Q again mid-air to detonate it. Like, if I wanted it to go off here, just pop, pop. But as it impacts the target, it does arc out. So, I mean, you can hit a lot of enemies like that. That's just difficult to position in a game. That's actually one of the reasons I usually went for an auto attack build on Cassia rather than a Q one. W build Blinding Light. After 0.5 seconds, deal 52 damage and blind enemies in an area for two seconds. Cassia deals 20% increased damage to blinded targets. One of the most fun things to do on Cassia is to stack up a blind comp with her. So you could do Johanna, Lili. Can Ariel still blind with the clap? I think so. Uh, and just stacking those up so you don't have to rely on her 15 second cooldown. You can rely on your team also weaving in stuff to blind targets as well. Super duper fun. If you've never tried it, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. It's the most fun I've ever had on Cassia. Fend, charge an enemy upon arriving channel for up to 1.5 seconds, dealing 75 damage, 74 damage to enemies in front of Cassia every 2.5 seconds, dealing 50% reduced damage to non-heroes. Avoidance remains charged while channeling. Was that avoidance there before? Weren't you pretty vulnerable? Wait a minute. Avoidance is different. Avoidance is way different. While moving unmounted, Ca Cassio gradually gains up to 30 armor. Wow. So before, she used to gain physical armor while she was on the move. So you could do like little stutter steps in between a gem rainer shooting at you and avoid most of the damage. Now it's only while you're moving? If you stop, it goes... Oh, that goes away very fast. It was 50 physical armor? I actually thought it was way more than 50. It was like 90 or something, but maybe that's not right. Maybe I got that number wrong. Maybe it was 40. I just looked at it and thought it was a nine. Um, But 
75 is max armor. Yeah, true, for sure. Um, so before it was just move it all and you would get it. Now you have to kind of like ramp up to it, which adds an interesting mechanic with Fend because maybe you're trying to use Fend. Ooh, fuck. Well, I mean, if you get the attack timer down, you can keep it up. Ooh, that's so scary. It's like a, oh my God, that's anxiety inducing. It's anxiety inducing. Back when Taints had sacred armor values, she had 90, I think. I really thought it was 90. Someone go back and watch my first Cassia video, see if it was 90. I'm saying when she released, I'm not saying like yesterday. Um, so, fucking, this is already weird. We're already in uncharted territory. Um, I really like that you have an incentive to cast Fend now. Because previously, the only reason I would cast Fend is if someone was running away from me and I wanted to catch up and I would just cancel it like that and continue to hit them. It was always 60, chat saying. Okay, I believe chat. I believe chat. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, really, really interesting stuff so far. And we haven't even looked at any talents. Very different. Oh my god, your Murray and Micro really has to be spot on. What's our attack timer? One a second. Well, that makes it a little bit easier. Ooh, you have to move in between your Q and your W, though. Oh, man, that's really weird. But 30%, it, before, it was only physical armor. Now it's armor to everything, which is crazy, especially for a, an assassin. To have 30 armor up potentially all the time is amazing. So, uh, really optimistic already, and I haven't even seen any of the talents. Let's take a look. We have some new art here as well, or maybe it's just merging two pieces of art. Increases the damage of Lightning Fury by 25. Casting it instantly grants five avoidance. Lightning Fury's damage is increased by one every time it hits a hero. Choose a talent. So some things to test with this. Um, if we're already moving and we cast, it spikes more avoidance, right? Yep. We have two charges of... Whoa! We have two charges of this. Um, so we can cast it fairly often. I'm just holding down right-click here and then to make sure I continue to move. It almost feels like I'm playing Lucio now, where I want to be in constant movement. Oh, that's really strange. Okay. All right. Uh, that's the other thing I wanted to test. Do the arcs... Does the split... Stack up more damage here as well. And it looks like it does, if I could aim it properly. Oh, yeah. Uh, one damage per Q is very low. So I'm wondering if there's other talents that increase that by a percentage or something. Um, but, yeah, w w that's crazy low. I think the value here is the avoidance more than anything else, to be honest, so far. I mean, you do get the 25 increase. Let's assume that 25 increase scales with our level, right? Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Mm, no. Technically, I think it stacks up to 6,000 or something. You're not going to land 6,000 Qs in a game, though. You know what I mean? In a normal match, under normal situations, that's not going to happen. Uh, increases... Uh, Impale increases Fen's cast range and area of effect by 25%. It deals an additional 50% damage to enemies below 50% health. So this is a nice little execute. Uh, increasing the range is nice too. It helps you be a little bit more sticky with it. However, most people just move out of this right away. In order to get a lot of value out of Fend, typically you need other forms of crowd control to stack up with it to make it really good. Also, you would want to combo this with your other ability, your blind, to try to get the most damage out of it as possible. So it would be like a Q, blind, fend. And I mean, that's a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. That is, that is a lot. And then charge strikes gain 20% increased attack speed. Every third basic attack deals 20% bonus damage and bounces to nearby enemies. 
Uh, Charge Strikes before was an active ability. It would come up on your one key, and I think it had like a 20, 30 second cooldown or something. You press it, and then every auto attack for that duration would splash to enemies. So this is a... I don't want to call it a nerf, but it is obviously a fundamental change. Let's see how the splash works. Oh, well, that's pretty good. We are level 20, though. Oh, interesting. So the increased damage splashes to everybody. It's not just increased damage to the initial target. When I read it, that's kind of what I thought it would do. So that's neat. And that could obviously do a lot of fucking damage. Yeah, I think throughout the course of a game, this will actually be a pretty big damage upgrade. And even if you're... So, charge strikes before as well, even when fighting a single target, would increase your damage. And you want to make sure you're blinding before that third attack. There's also a really cool spell effect I'm seeing here. Look at our weapon. Oh my god! That looks so fucking good! Yo, shout out again to the fucking art team. That is amazing. I love that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 274. Wait, did that not deal more damage? Okay, it did. Wow, wow, wow. That's really cool. So I like that a lot. Um, I would still definitely pick that up. But I don't know what the rest of the build is going to look like, so I guess we should probably see. Plate of the Whale. Avoidance works while mounted. Regenerate 15 health per second while avoidance is active. If fully charged, gain an additional 31 health per second. Um, What did this do before? Was it like movement speed if you got attacked or something while you were moving? Um, so you're getting like a health globe, Choose a talent. but I would say this is more valuable than a lot of healing talents on assassins, just because you also have the armor there to make that health you're regenerating stick a little bit more. Oh, he is faster than me. Um, I'm not crazy about that. It is nice that it works while you're mounted, though. So you can mount up, move to a team fight, and then have this ready when you get there. Or mount up and move to gank a lane and have that ready when you get there. And look at this. While we're just mounted moving around, while we're just moving around the map, we would actually be getting a pretty considerable amount of health back. So this might be really good on huge maps like Warhead Junction or slightly bigger maps like Curse Hollow where you're going to be moving long distances. This could be really, really good for just staying out on the map. Uh, that's one of the reasons I really like Charism's Insight build, the blue build. It's because, like, Charism can heal himself, obviously. He's returning mana to himself. What this means is you're always going to be out on the map doing something. You're always going to be influencing the game in some way. Whether you're getting XP in lane or going to take a camp, you're never having that idle time back in base unless you die. So something like this can be really good for just always doing something, always being on the field, always getting some momentum for your team, if we're also able to keep up our mana at the same time. And that remains to be seen. We have Ring of the Leech, basic attacks against your primary target. It's a very specific wording, so it doesn't work with charge strikes, everybody. And it's only basic attacks. Wait a minute. Basic attacks against your primary target heal for 15% of the damage. If an enemy is blinded, this also affects Lightning, Fury, and Fend. So it's baseline healing now, whereas before, they always had to be blinded. Interesting. And it doesn't say anything about fucking heroes. Hold on, I actually think we can do this. Let me get full. Whoop. We're so slow. Yeah, we can't move around like Tracer can't. Uh, uh, bah, bah. Not doing it. 
I'm not gonna do it. Bah. Still, like the armor does seem to add up. So we blind him to take advantage of our Q. We did lose our avoidance, and I'm not sure how. Oh my god, it's like if you don't move in between every little single attack, you get punished. The APM required to play this character, the actions per minute, just went through the roof. Through the roof. Uh, what's our last one here? Inner Light. Activate to heal for 25% of your maximum health over 5 seconds. Enemy heroes hit with Lightning Fury. Lower the cooldown of this ability by 10 seconds. So you take damage. Hit me. Ugh. And then we just heal up. It's like picking up a regen globe. And then every time we throw out our Q, I'm assuming the arcs also lower the cooldown of this, right? Oh, yeah. Oop. That could be fun. You'd probably want to combo that with the one that increases um, your damage every time you throw one of these out, just because you're going to be incentivized to spam them even more often. I'm actually really taken back by Play to the Whale. That does not seem bad now. I definitely see a reason to pick that up. Now, that's not burst healing, like Ring of the Leech would be, but it is sustained health throughout the entire game. It's almost like having second wind for Muradin active all the time. Which is, well, not as much healing. I almost like it. Certainly interesting. I really like our early level choices so far. Seraphim, Seraphs him. Basic attacks against your primary enemy. Grant 10 mana and reduce the cooldown of Blinding Light by 1.5 seconds. Increases the passive damage bonus of Blinding Light from 20% to 30%. Enemies hit by Fend are slowed by 30% for 3 seconds. You know, chat, you guys... Maybe not you guys that are here, but in the past, I've gotten a lot of comments to try out Fend build for Cassia, and I've just never liked it. Because enemies just walk out of it right away. <laughs> just walk out of it right away. So, is the slow meaningful enough to actually keep someone inside of Fend? Prob probably not. The issue with keeping people in Fend is more a shape issue. <laughs> As you just saw there versus Arthas. You're moving your character into melee range and then shooting out a cone from that position. So this person, who is likely your primary target, simply has to move this much to be out of range. <laughs> Where I, I do agree, like the person, if you can catch someone at the end, yeah, they're taking some more damage, dude. But this fucking guy? Oh, I'm safe. Just saying, it has some serious flaws. Uh, Surge of Light, after taking 1,000... 96 damage with avoidance active. Cassia can activate avoidance to deal 658 damage around her. I've always liked that talent. I think it was level 4 before, wasn't it? Was that moved to level 7? Choose a talent. No, it wasn't. Was that? Yeah, it was level 7. Because you could get a Ring of Leech at level 4 and then pick that up. Always really enjoyed that talent. Super fulfilling. Takes a lot of damage. Deals a lot of damage. Uh, especially with the new way that avoidance works. You're going to want to have it up all the time. So that's not interfering with your gameplay at all. That is literally just every now and then you get to pop someone for a shit ton of damage, which is really, really cool. Then level 10, ball lightning. Throw a ball of lightning at an enemy hero that bounces up to six times between nearby enemies and Cassia dealing 395 damage to enemies hit. So you as the Cassia player want to cast this and then literally just stick to whoever the ball is on. I'll show you a better example. Um, if my cooldowns would come off. You literally just want to stick to whoever the ball is on because it'll continue to bounce as long as you're close to them and continue to deal damage. Also, if an enemy team is very, very grouped, that would continue to deal damage to them as well. I've always been a fan of Valkyrie. I like Valkyrie a lot, but Lightning Ball deals a shit ton of damage. And 
if you consider now that you're going to have 30% armor all of the time, assuming you're doing this proper, properly, um, you're going to be more protected than ever before while you're diving in with the lightning ball to try to finish someone off. <laughs> oh my god, that was disgusting. I should keep in mind we're level 20, but that was a lot of damage. <laughs> If we wanted to go for Valkyrie instead, which I do, again, I do like Valkyrie quite a lot. Um, summon a Valkyrie that rushes to Cassia's, rushes to Cassia after 0.75 seconds, pushing the first enemy hero hit, dealing 493 damage and stunning them for 0.5 seconds at the end of their path. The Valkyrie knocks back all other enemies in the way. This is like a really slow stitches hook. It brings someone to you. Minute cooldown, you can spam it all the time. If your team is winning, this can set up some pretty great plays. If your team is losing, well, you probably just pulled the people into you that want to kill you. So keep that in mind. Also, that activation time is no joke. And keep in mind that enemies do get blocked by terrain. What's an easy way of showing that? Yeah, that guy kind of leashes right away. Let me see if I can convince Arthas to come over here. See, he didn't go the full path because the terrain impeded him. Uh, this is You're making this really hard to show, bud. You're making this really hard to show. Oh, here we go. Well, maybe. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, it can be stopped by any kind of little tiny wall or anything like that. So, you really have to do... Uh, have proper positioning to make that work. So one of her ults is for killing se kill secures with your team. One is about doing just fucking damage and quite a lot of damage, especially if you can charge in with it and you're on the assault. Level 13, War Matron. Cassia becomes protected while channeling Fend and for an additional one second if the channel is completed. Uh, in most cases, the channel will never be completed because the target just moves out of the way. However, that protected could certainly be nice. I could see some pretty easy plays where you immune a uh, pyroblast because you can fend dominion, right? Oh no, the orb is coming. Easy peasy, dude. Wait, what? Are you protected the entire time? Hold on. That's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, shit. Okay, we might be rethinking the fin build here. Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. The war traveler. Gain 5% movement speed while the voidance is fully charged. Gain an additional 10% movement speed. Uh, and mounting is in Divine Steed! Holy shit! Another character has Divine Steed! Oh my god! I'm, I'm panicking, I don't know what to pick! Oh, that's beautiful! Oh, that's so good! Yo, Divine Steed's busted. Divine Seed is fantastic. That's my favorite talent on Urel. That's one of the reasons I loved Urel. Having this on more characters is so fucking cool. Like, oh, I need to get away. Goodbye. I fucking love that. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, gain one basic attack range while avoidance is fully charged. Gain additional one basic attack range. Uh, that's better. Fuck. Can't take Divine Steed. Damn it. <laughs> well, Divine Steed has very clear synergy with Play to the Whale. Avoidance damage, Ball Lightning, War Traveler. So, like, boom. We're repositioning, we're gaining armor while we're moving around. We get instant, we get instant repositions, uh, and we get avoidance while we're mounted. So, I mean, all of that is very good together. Uh, lost it. My health didn't even move. What the fuck? 
I mean, that was an Arthas bot, but what the fuck? Um, however, if we were trying to min-max damage here, Chat said her auto attack range was also increased by one by default, which is good because she was a very, very close fighter before. Um, I don't know, and I could be totally off basis here, okay? I don't know if this will actually increase her splash range because I kind of think it's based on the hitbox of the target you're splashing to. At least that's how it used to work. Like I said, with my example with the core, when she could do that back in the day, that's how it used to work. So I don't know if that's actually beneficial to that or not. That feels great. That feels great. Cassia feels great. I mean, I know, so I'm a lot more familiar with Tracer, so when we were taking a look at her rework, I was like, this is different. I don't know how I feel about it. All the talents are moved around. I played a fair amount of Cassia too, but each talent tier, I'm like, Whoa, that's awesome. Holy shit, look at that. Whereas with Tracer, I was like, oh, they did this. How does that work with this? Oh my God. This seems very straightforward. This seems very impressive. I'm really, really optimistic about it so far. Well, obviously, I have to see how it plays in a game. But this for an auto attack build seems pretty busted. What's that clicking noise? Okay. Um, then at level 16, Power Strike. Lightning Fury pierces, but only splits on heroes. Heroes hit are marked for 15 seconds. Upon reaching three marks, remove the marks and cast a blinding light at their feet. Oh. Okay. Okay. Gain two additional charges of Lightning Fury. Finn's impact launches a lightning bolt towards... I want to see that. We have four charges of this shit. What the fuck? Okay, so those stacks might be really good now. Oh my god, even if you don't even if you don't go with the stacking build, look how much AoE damage we're doing in this situation. It's actually pretty nutty. That could be cool. And then martial law, basic attacks against enemy heroes that are stun rooted or slowed deal bonus damage equal to 3% of their maximum health. Stun rooted or slowed. You can apply one slow for three seconds. Uh, stun rooted or slowed. Is that the only slow you can apply? Used to be able to slow with your Q. That doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. Uh, I don't think this is that great just by yourself. Um, you kind of need to have a team comp for it. That being said, if you're playing with a Jaina, playing with an Arthas, you're going to proc this all the time. Playing with a Muradin, you're going to proc it all the time. And your attack speed is pretty fast. Um, 1.2 a second. It's really not bad. So... Also, something to keep in mind, if more people are slowed here, you might proc that on extra enemies when you chain. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not 100% on that, uh, but that might be a thing. So, by yourself, not great. With the right team, that could be very, very good. Uh, chat was right, though. Cassia cannot deal percentage damage to Deathwing. True. True, true, true. Uh, so if I was going for an auto attack build, I guess I would go for the for Fury, which seems weird. Ah, uh, no, you'd probably go for the blind, right? If you were doing auto attack build, whoa, stay asleep, bud. If you're doing auto attack build, because you go Ring of the Leech because you want to get the blind off. Does Ring of the Leech increase healing? A basic attack against your primary target heal fifty percent of the enemy blinded. This is also, uh, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. We shall see. I'm thinking I like Orchard Clear. Choose a talent. While avoidance is fully charged. Weapons ready. 
Uh, all right, we'll do Power Strike. And then Infinite Bouncing. Ball Lightning can bounce indefinitely. Every bounce reduces its cooldown by three or five seconds. This is always fun to do. This stacks multiple times. Is this ever going to happen in a real game? Absolutely not. I'm out of mana! I'm out of mana! I can't cast anymore! Can we talk about how it's favoring these two? What the fuck is that about? What is that about? Why was it favoring these two? What? Um, Cassia's basic attacks now ignore armor. This has always been fantastic. Uh, Cassia's basic attacks now ignore, ignore armor, and while avoidance is fully charged, they deal an additional 20% bonus damage. <laughs> Activate to fully charge avoidance and increase its armor value to 60 for four seconds. Losing avoidance removes this. Bonus. Hold on. Okay. One thing I have not considered this entire time is like, I've really been focused on how do we keep avoidance up ourselves? How do we make sure that we always have that 30? And it's just been a little stutter stepping like this. Um, if you get stunned one time, your avoidance goes away. So having a means of getting that back instantly might actually be very good. If you get rooted one time, your avoidance goes away. If you get silenced, if you get, I say silenced, I meant taunted. If you get taunted, which is a silence that keeps you still, your avoidance goes away. That's more of a problem than I thought it would be, I think. Slain. So this might be the answer to that. Just being able to hit a button and get a shit ton of avoidance might be good. Might be good. Very optimistic about these changes. So if I was going to do a build here, we would do charge strikes, which I still can't pick as a favorite, into Ring of the Leech, Surge of Light, uh, Ball Lightning, or Valkyrie, whichever I was feeling at the time. Then I would do Gloves of Alacrity, uh, probably Power Strike, and then Titan's Revenge in ideal situations. In an ideal situation. Will this work in every game? No, probably not. What are these little things? What is, what is that? What am I, what am I doing to cause that to happen? Why not Sarah's him at seven? I'll show you. Yo, hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. Uh, because Sarah's him can't do this. For 2,600 and fucking whatever damage in the middle of a team fight. That also heals you, right? Or does that not heal you anymore because this has a stipulation on it? Okay, so that might actually be nerfed. Um, Ring of the Leech used to just heal you for any damage you dealt to blinded targets. Uh, so if that doesn't heal you anymore, I used to use that as like a health potion. So that may not be as good as it was before. Base attacks against your primary enemy grant 10 mana and reduce the cooldown of Blinding Light by 0.5 seconds. Increases the passive damage bonus of Blinding Light. Mm, I still think I would prefer the, the burst damage. Especially because now you're going to be healing off of your auto attacks all the time with Ring of Leech. Rather than... Every time your W is up, you don't need to cast your W as often with an auto attack build.
And you have more survivability versus other people than you've ever had. We'll see, though. There's definitely other options in here. Um, What would a Q build look like? We would definitely do Thunderstroke. Honestly, I think I still might do charged attacks and just go for a little bit of a hybrid, but we'll assume that we're going full Q. Uh, inner Light. Activate to heal. Then I would actually probably go for Sarasim with this. Because, actually, never mind. I was thinking we would do Ring of Bleach. I don't know. I think Q build, I, I think a hybrid build could work well with Q. Um, that does give mana back as well. Lightning ball. Honestly, protected in this situation doesn't sound half bad. But War Traveler, how do you say no to that? Then you would go for... Get two additional charges of Lightning Fury Finn. Lo yeah, that one for sure. So look at our stacks here. Like, they become super easy to stack up all of a sudden. Especially if we had a better angle of attack. Because we have another ability that's also applying the stack. And our auto attack is giving us mana back, which means we're going to be able to fund all of this no problem. How much do we heal for with a Q? We're at 2,300. Wait, are we not healing? Oh, right, I have to activate it. And then it lowers the cooldown. Right, 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 right. So the cooldown should be lowered by Fend as well. Yeah, it could be interesting. I think Ring of Leech might be more reliable, and then you get the cooldown reduction here. Only splits on heroes. Heroes hit by Mark for 15 seconds upon reaching three marks. Remove the marks. Cast a blinding light at their feet. I don't know. I, I'd probably have to test this one out in the game to see which one we like more. Uh, level 20, probably the instant armor, just to keep ourselves a little bit safer. Very optimistic first impression of Cassia. I like what I see a lot here. It seems like she's going to be a lot more accessible, and she's going to have more build variety than before, I feel like. Although, I kind of went against the grain with builds before. I know a lot of people really enjoyed the Q build on Cassia previously, and I just never really got into it. In Check the level 20 Valkyrie upgrade. Yeah, it does, it does a root in silence. It should, other than that, work exactly the same. The impelled hero is blinded for five seconds. Oh, Ring of Leech. That, thank you for telling me to check this. Uh, the impaled hero is blinded for five seconds. Upon impaling a hero, Castery Valkyrie creates a wave of light that deals 439 damage to nearby enemies. That wave silences... And okay, this is very different than what I thought. Very small impact area. Uh, so... Ugh. You would want to do this on someone who's extremely grouped. You're going to blind the person you make contact with. And then root everyone out. Oh, the root happens on everyone else, so they can't follow up right away. Uh, but it's only towards the impact area. That would be a lot better if it was... If, if it was anyone that traveled with... The, 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 anyone that traveled by the target was affected. Uh, that might be too strong, though. <laughs> so ideally, you want to hit someone in the middle of a group so everyone else is rooted. That's going to be very hard to do consistently. That's going to be... really hard to do consistently, but that's very good. That's very, very good. That's one of the main issues that the ability had before. You would go to root someone, and you're just pulling them... So I mentioned before, Valkyrie is really good if you're already winning. 
uh, because what happens is you pull someone in, and if your team's already winning, you can blow them up. Or if the enemy team is retreating, they're already moving away from you, and you're pulling someone back into you. Whereas if you're losing, you're basically giving the enemy team a reason to initiate. So if that's the case, this route for three seconds, and it's something for three seconds too. So that's like going to be locking down people like Li Ming. They can't reposition. Tracer can't reposition. That might be what the ability needed. I'm glad you guys told me to take another look at that because I just read the little description. I was like, okay, whatever. That is going to be hard to land consistently, I feel like. That's going to take a lot of practice. Very optimistic about the new Cassia. I hope you guys enjoyed our theory crafting video today. We're going to play a couple games of Cassia and a couple games of Tracer. And those uh, matches are going to be coming out every day. So you don't have to wait every other day this week for your video. I upload other stuff too. And the YouTube algorithm doesn't send it out to my subscribers. So if you have any interest in the new XCOM or the new Doom, it's been going out on the channel every day. <laughs> Goodbye.